I got a new Icom radio. It's an IC9700. It's going to go in a go kit that I'm currently building because I got a case from Novexcom that will actually hold my 7300 and the 9700. And I put most of it together the other day, and then I was like, okay, it's time to install the 9700, but I got to do an unboxing video first. So here we are. This is as far out as my camera will zoom. And I just want to do an unboxing, really, guys. I know some of you don't like that, but I want to show what's in the box. This is a high-dollar, expensive, very high-quality radio, VHF, UHF, satellites, and whatnot. And I just kind of want to show what's in the box. Then we're going to set it up and see what uh, what it, menus look like and all that kind of good stuff. Do some uh, repeater work here locally to me with it. Kind of go from there. So that was the... that The manual is... There's like three manuals in here, and they're probably in different languages. I don't know, warranty card and whatnot, so all that's good to go. Microphone and power cable. That's a pretty beefy power cable right there. That's probably 10-gauge wire, so that's good. I believe this thing will do 100 watts on 2 meters. So extra fuses. Cool. Good. I always save my boxes for my radios, so make sure that's in the right spot. All right, good. There we go. And that's the radio right there. I think that's heavier than the 7300 is. So that's pretty much all there is to it, is the microphone, the power cable, the big, big manual, and the actual radio itself. It is on the overhead here. It looks just like the 7300, of course, which is what we knew. Here, here's the moment of truth right here. Watch. There we go. <laughs> So I've been wanting one of these for a while. I have an old Yezu FT736R that is modular. You can put a 2 meter, 220, 440 in it and whatnot. This radio here has 2 meters, 440s, and 1.2 gigahertz. And up until today, up until, well, up until purchasing this, I've never owned a 1.2 gigahertz radio. I had a small Alenco that would do 1.2 gigahertz back when I sold Alencos. I tinkered around with it for a little bit, but somebody on the on my website ended up buying it, so... I never really owned it that much, but here we are right here. This is the back of the radio. It's one of the best things I like to see is the back of the radio. All right, so this is the 144 megahertz right here. This is the 430 megahertz antenna, and this is the uh, 1200 megahertz antenna. These are both type N connectors on the back. That's your standard four pin connector for power cable there. This is a really nice layout of what all the ports are right there, a little, little legend or guide or whatnot. So. This, uh, let's see, Ethernet RFN 10 megahertz. I think that might be the GPS. I'm not sure, though. Accessory port, data cable, USB-B. Okay, this is for a remote, a keyer, an external speaker, two external speakers, external speaker main and sub. So there we go, right there. Pretty much the same all the way around on everything else. Right there, external speaker again. Or headphone, headphones, right? Well, external speaker and or headphones. I usually, on the 7300, I'll put uh, earbuds in here when I'm out, like at field day or something, in a louder environment. If I want to listen to the radio and not the people talking around me, it's a convenient spot to keep those. So let's plug this thing up and uh, maybe get it on the air. While I am wiring up this new radio, it comes with this really beefy 10-gauge wiring harness with the four pin connector and bare ends on the other side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of these AP QuickCon connectors, connect this in, just attach this to the wire because I'll probably want to put power poles on this later, but my power pole kit's in the garage right now. I'm doing this. This is sitting on my desk and I'm just going to use it right now because I can. So this is pretty cool because it's it's a power pole on one end and it's these uh, Wagyu or Wagyu, however you not Wagyu, not like the steak, but Wagyu connectors, however you say it, I don't know. W-A-G-O, Wagyu, Wagyu, whatever. But they're put together, AP QuickCon, I'll put a link to um, his QRZ page. He doesn't He doesn't sell these on a website yet. I'm trying to get him to add them to some websites, maybe, uh, maybe his own website one day, I don't know. But he sent me these and asked me to put them in some videos, so that's what we're doing today. Let's stick that right there. Black to black, red to red, nope. Okay, good. Now I've got an Anderson power pole in the back of my bare wires, and I can take that off anytime I want to and use it for something else. 
Today's video is sponsored by Mezzi and Poloni Coax, which is pretty much all I use here in this ham shack. We're going to be hooking up this uh, Hyperflex 7 today with the Evo connector, which I really like. You can save a 20% discount on everything Mezzi and Poloni at the link in the website description below with the coupon code of HR2Cables. Thank you, MNP, for supporting this channel. Okay, I can already tell you right now this thing is cool. The menu systems are a little bit different than the 7300, although admittedly, I can't remember the last time I updated the firmware on my 7300, so it's probably old. But check this out. This is actually pretty darn cool right here. Okay, so I have, uh, I'm using the 50 amp Astron power supply that was sent to me by Astron through Gigaparts. You can get these on the Gigaparts website, so we're going to I'm going to show you what it, what kind of amps it draws there. And then I'm using my MFJ 8, uh, 849 meter here. So the first thing I noticed is that there's a main and a sub VFO, VFO in volume right here. So this one right here, you can see the little green mark right there for squelch. And this one is squelch here. So there's a separate uh, volume and uh, RF gain and squelch knob per band. I like that. I think that's pretty cool. I think that's handy. That would be very handy. Especially since it's possible you've got... I mean, this thing's full duplex because it'll work satellites and whatnot. So it's possible you might even have two antennas on it. Uh, whether it's a 2 meters in 1.2 gig or 440 in 1.2 gig, whatever. It's got three antenna ports, three bands, full duplex. And it just makes sense that each one would need its own volume. So that's that's pretty smart, I think. But the thing is, when I turned this up, and I threw my call out on 6.52 a couple of times, when I, let's see, let's get back to this menu here. If I, if I go in here, so this, these menu systems look pretty similar to the 7300, not exactly, but they're pretty darn similar right there. I think if you hit scope like that, yeah, there we go, now we've got the scope. And there's probably a way to get it to, to do only single band display. I'm not sure about that. I'm not, I don't care about that right now. Okay, put, turn it back there. So I was getting, right here it says TX power limit. So you can turn off the power limit and it's just full blast. And if we do that, watch this meter right here, okay? This is pretty cool. KC5 HWB testing on an IC9700 from Grapevine, Texas. One, two, three, four, five. 122 watts. I wonder if that's sounding in the camera. I wonder if you guys can hear a, a buzzing in the camera with that. Hopefully not. It's on my Ed Fong tri-band antenna, which is about 27 feet in the air right now, so it should be okay. I'm kind of surprised I'm not getting anybody back. There is some, there is some local activity on 6.52 around here, off and on, not all the time, but, you know, okay. So what I did was I went in here and I turned it down to right there, and I was like, well, wait a minute, how do you adjust that? Because it was at 1% when I opened up. So what you do is just long press this, and then you got this limit here, RF power and limit. So I don't know why they call it a limit. I mean, it is it is a limit. You're limiting it to 70%. So if I, turn it, if I put it on 70% right here and key up, I'm going to get about 81 watts. KC5 HWB testing, one, two, three, four, five. There we go right there. So that's pretty darn cool, okay? Now, if I turn the limit off again, I want you to see the Astron power meter, or the Astron um, power supply down here. So it's uh, at run and maintain in monitor status, it's running, it's uh, pulling about 1.3 amps right there, 14.1 volts, as you can see. If I key down like this, one, two, three, four, five, testing, KC5, HWB. So about 15 amps keyed up at full power on two meters. Okay, okay, that's not bad. It's not too bad. And then, uh, let's see. And there's there's a, there's some local guys that hang out on 146.57 here. And I'm kind of surprised I can't hear these anybody on this right now. Because this is actually a quite a very active simplex frequency around the Dallas-Fort Worth area. 6.57. Somewhere around here, there's a simplex net on Friday nights. But right here, 6.57. I'm pretty sure that's the frequency. 6.57. I'll verify that. I'm 98% sure that that's the correct frequency. I've got it programmed as a channel in my ID5100 in the truck, so <laughs> uh, I might be remembering the frequency wrong, but I don't think that I am. KC5 HWB, is there anyone out there that can give me a test for a uh, brand new radio I just hooked up? KC5 HWB. I guess not. I guess not, so no, no joy on that. Okay, so let's try 
a, uh, a local repeater, because I'm curious to see how well, or how, how you, pro I don't know how to program uh, CTCSS or PL tone. So we see duplex right there. It automatically went to the duplex plus setting at the 147-100. This is the Hearst Amateur Radio Club repeater. And I'm going to go through here. Yeah, tone, okay, here, right here, tone, right there. I'm going to long press it, and it's going to tell me, okay, there we go, 110.9, exit. Now I should be able to, I'm going to turn the, I am going to turn the um, power down for punching into a repeater. Yeah, there we go. KC5H should be testing on a new radio. Is anyone monitoring? They shortened that squelch tail. It used to be a long, lot longer than that. This is a good repeater. This this repeater gets a lot of activity, usually in the afternoons between like 2 and 5 or 2 and 6 p.m. Weekdays, there's a couple of guys that get on there around 2.30 or 3, somewhere in there. And there's some drive time activity in the morning as well. Um, right now, it's about 12.45 in the afternoon. So there may not be monitoring. People may be out at lunch or something like that. But this is the Hearst Amateur Radio Club W5 HRC repeater. They're the ones who have taught the general, I'm sorry, the technician and the general class on this channel. Uh, Chris, KD5HIY, he's the main instructor over there. And this is the repeater they use. I mon I used to monitor it a lot more than I do now. I do monitor it from time to time, and there's usually a good group of people on there in the afternoon. So if you're in the mid-cities area between Dallas and Fort Worth, this is a good repeater to listen to. Uh, KC5HWB. Okay, but that's a nice clean signal coming back from the repeater. I really like that signal coming back from the repeater. Let's go down here and see. This is the Dallas Amateur Radio Club repeater. Now, did it hold my PL tone? It did not. So as soon as I changed frequencies, it, uh, okay, it held that. Okay, good. Exit, function, tone on, tone. There we go. That's the Dallas Amateur Radio Club. That's a pretty good repeater as well. This is the Dallas County Aries repeater during for Skywarn situations when there's storms coming through the Dallas County area. KC5 HWB testing a new radio. Is anyone monitoring? I'm gonna look forward. I'm looking forward to using this radio. I really am. It's a neat radio. Even though there's nobody, there's nobody. This is what I'm talking about with my repeaters. I've said before, key up your repeaters once a day. Once a day, pick a local repeater to you and key it up and throw your call sign out. If everyone did that once a day for two minutes, we would have a lot more activity on the repeaters. I need to get better about it myself. I do this periodically. I don't do it every day, but when I am home and in town, I try to do it at least once a day. Usually not on this repeater because I've got repeaters closer to me than this one, but I'm kind of surprised there's nobody on that repeater right now because that's a very active repeater. There's probably 50, 60, 70, 80 repeaters in the Dallas Fort Worth North Texas area and there's probably about a half dozen of them that get used on a regular basis. The rest of them get used some some of them are dead. Some of them have no use at all. But some of them get used kind of here and there. But the Dallas repeater and then now this one right here, this is the Denton uh, County Amateur Radio Club repeater, KC5H WB testing. And these two are probably the most active repeaters in the area, I think. Radio check. I'm asking for a radio check. Hey, uh, good afternoon. I just uh, hooked up a brand new radio here, uh, IC9700. Wanted to make sure everything was on the up and up. QTH. I am in Grapevine right now, right next to DFW Airport. Caller, you can come in the Denton Rasheed. I don't know if you're coming in the one at TW or the boat or there on the dam, but it sounds good, man. And there we go. And that repeater's fairly close to my hunting lease, which is hopefully where I will be using this Novexcom Go Kit a lot over the next couple of months. So that is the IC9700. I've been wanting to pick up one of these for a long time, and now that I got the Novexcom box that's being built, it's got my 7300 in it, and it's got a place for the 9700 right above it. This was the time to get it done. You're going to see some more videos with both of these radios on POTA activations and maybe field day and stuff like that on videos upcoming. Let me know if you guys have this radio, what you think about it. Have you ever worked satellite comms from it? I might, uh, maybe I'll do a video with Robert, do some satellite comms with it and see how easy or not easy that is to do. That's going to be fun to see. But uh, 73 guys, thanks for watching. YouTube thinks you want to watch these videos next. 73, catch you next time.